In this video, sponsored by Archvillain Games' new sci-fi villain line of 3D printing STL files, I'll show you two quick ways to paint armor and a bonus pro tip as well. Warning, Uncle Adam is not a professional. He's usually not even very good. Try any and all of Uncle Adam's pro tips at your own risk. Void where prohibited, Uncle Adam is not actually an uncle. Many of the models that we use in our tabletop wargaming are wearing armor. They gotta protect themselves, you know, it's the way it works. Armor has been around, obviously, for a very, very long time in warfare, and it's been made out of all kinds of different types of material, uh, cloth, like padded cloth and stuff like that, and then like leather are pretty obvious. But there's even been like very tough armor made out of layers and layers and layers of paper, uh, generally Asia way back in the day. But the usual armor that we seem to think of, especially in fantasy wargaming, is metal. I'll be honest, I love models covered in metal armor because that type of armor is very easy and quick to paint. I'll show you how. I started by getting this model printed uh, from a friend of mine. This is a Galt. Varak from today's sponsor, Archvillain Games, which more about them and this month's awesome sci-fi models at the end of the episode. Uh, and he is a he is a massive, massive boy. He's a giant kind of orc looking model standing on a 75 millimeter base. He's a sci-fi model, but he also has some kind of cool fantasy vibes to his armor and all that kind of stuff. So this pro tip will work fine for either type of genre. I started, as usual, by priming him black with monument black airbrush primer, and then doing a white zenithal highlight from above. Now, you don't have to use an airbrush in the situation. You could use dry brush or a rattle can or something like that. I've talked about that in the past. Pachow. But it won't matter much to the armor steps as we go forward. I let the primer sit overnight, and then it was time to start painting. Mostly using different GW contrast paints and then, of course, you know, some dry brushing techniques here and there. And doing that, I painted most of the model that wasn't armor. Usually, it's a good idea to paint the model inside out, meaning like the skin first, right? And then, and then, and then you paint the, uh, the visible underclothes that are poking up and whatnot, and then the visible outer clothes, and then leaving the armor generally for last. On all the stuff that wasn't armor, I just took my time to get the contrast paint in the right spots and not overlap it and kind of, you know, blob it all over. And then I just let that you know, zenithal priming underneath the you know, transparent contrast paints do its job. Then it was time to start working on all of the metal parts. For most of these techniques, it's important to underpaint the areas that are going to be armor, right? Uh, I usually underpaint metal armor with black. And in this situation, I use the color Black Legion from GW Contrast Paint. Um, there's also Black Templar. Black Legion's a little bit more opaque, almost completely nearly opaque for a contrast paint, but it still covers very quickly and in one coat because it's so fluid, right? Um, you could use, if you were going with more of a gold armor, let's say, something like that, or even maybe bronze, I would probably go with a brown color for your underpaint. But for, for normal silver, I'm going to go with black. Once your underpainting is all finished and dried, then we move on to the next step. Quick technique number one dry brushing metallics over your dark underpaint. In this situation, I used my favorite silver metallic color, which is Vallejo Model Metallic Air Silver. Silver is the specific color, but the Model Metallic Air, those are great paints. Um, they're not just for airbrush. You can use them in all kinds of things, including dry brushing. And I dry brushed that color on to the armor parts with a mid-sized cheap makeup brush, which in this situation I think works best. I've talked about makeup brushes for dry brushing on your miniatures. Talked about them in the past a bunch of different times, including making an entire video about them. Pachow. But they are really the pro strat, right? You use them uh, and you go kind of a bit slowly and you build up the silver over the black over time and it will just really look like old corroded metal armor, even though it's you know resin or plastic or whatever. Just try not to get it onto the other painted parts of the model that you've already done previously, if you can. Here's a quick hidden pro tip. Uh, bigger makeup brushes usually give a softer, more natural armor effect, but they can sometimes be, like I said, a little unwieldy in spots where you don't want metallics on the other parts of the model that are not supposed to be metal, you know? So if you get several different sizes of cheap makeup brushes, you'll probably be happier in the long run. 
Also, this doesn't just have to be silver over black. This technique works with all kinds of color combinations. On this guy's kind of weird floppy armored belt that seems to be made out of pieces of metal that look like coffins, uh, I used Saigor Brown contrast as the underpaint instead of the black, and then used Monument Hobby's bronze as the dry brush color. You could use all kinds of colors as the underpaint if you wanted to. Let's say red, for example. If you wanted, you know, like an orc with red painted metal armor, because red ones go faster from what I've been told, then you'd use a silver dry brush over that red underpaint. Maybe something a little bit scratchier than a makeup brush to give it, to show the red paint being all scratched off and showing the metal underneath. That's the idea. Quick technique number two. Paint the armor a bright metallic and then dirty it down. Here, I again used my favorite silver paint, but this time I didn't dry brush it on. I just painted it straight on, you know, normally or whatever, pretty much covering everything on the piece. Now, I still put it over a black underpaint because then if you don't, if you put it over a black underpaint, then any spots that you might miss become shadows and look natural, like in the nooks and crannies if there's a lot of detail in the armor or whatever. Or if you just leave some spots not covered completely in the flat areas, that stuff becomes corrosion, which is also pretty cool. It all depends on how you want your finished piece to look. Once this whole thing is dry, it's time for you to figure out how dirty you want your piece to be and what color metal it should be as well. The color of the wash that you put over the silver base of your armor will affect the look greatly. On this leg armor here on this guy, I simply just put some black wash over the silver to dirty it up, but it still looks like silver metal, just dirtier and, you know, not polished. I feel like orc type characters rarely spend a lot of time polishing their armor, right? However, if you don't want the armor to look like iron or steel or something like that, but you want maybe something slightly fancier like brass, I don't know, then use a sepia wash over the silver and you'll get a very different looking material even though it's the same base color. You get this kind of cool, well not cool, you get a warm color, but it's a soft brass that I think is really interesting. Now at this point, you could certainly be done with your armor. This will look great for tabletop play, whether it's for you know a war gaming type game or for role playing game miniatures or whatever. But here's the bonus technique number three, I think. Go back and add extra washes and contrast paints over what you've already done to show more wear and grunge on your armor. I generally use warmer colors for this step, uh, brown washes, sepia washes, stuff like that. Uh, a great workhorse, in my opinion, is Skeleton Horde contrast paint from Games Workshop. And I don't cover everything. I don't slop it over like I did with the initial wash. I just go into corners and to recessed areas and do some stippling with the color uh, a little bit here and there. I, I love stippling and you know that kind of stuff to do weathering specifically on armor. I actually made a whole video just about stippling and weathering uh, some time ago. But ciao. And again, if you want to go even a little bit further, you can go back right towards the end of this entire process. After everything's dry, and add a little bit of highlight on some of the edges of the armor using your original silver color that you started with. But it kind of depends on whether you want to spend that time and or how grungy you want your armor to look, right? I think this model looks great, and I always look forward to painting models in metal armor because I, I know I can use these techniques to make it look pretty good pretty quickly. I hope you liked these pro tips, and I hope you get a chance to try them yourself. I also want to thank the sponsor of this video, Archvillain Games. They provided the STL of the sci-fi orc model that I painted in this video. You probably know Archvillain for the amazing line of fantasy STL models that they've been providing for years through their Patreon and in places like My Mini Factory and whatnot. But now, they're getting into science fiction models made specifically for wargaming as well with their sci-fi villain line. Subscribe to their sci-fi villain tier on Patreon, link down below and also in the description, and get new releases each month. This month is 26 models on custom bases and, and whatnot, including this Varak that I painted here on a 75mm base, and the massive Bodiluk on a 145mm base. This dude is huge. Um, you'll get there also their Star Vault intro pack when you join. Uh, which has, I think, nine pieces of terrain, five explorer models, and a dragon. Check out the Great Bloodshed Galt Clan this month and prepare for all the other new sci-fi models that they'll be releasing each month on Patreon. And then 
moving to my mini factory after that. Thanks to Archvillain Games for sponsoring this video, and thanks for watching.